it's Lizzie all from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you for joining me again today. Today I have a slightly different project and I'm starting it in a slightly different way because there are quite a few steps and I don't want to bore you to death with how to do all of them and do them all over and over again. So I'm making a rainbow card and I'm using a ton of colours. I mean pretty much the whole but not all of the Brights collection. Um, with a couple of others added in for good measure. So I've added in pumpkin pie and lovely lipstick. But other than that, this is pretty much the... Oh, and lemon lime twist. It's pretty much the Brights collection um, because I wanted a really bright rainbow. Now, we don't have blends in all of the colours, but it's fine because not all of the colours, when you put them onto the um, epoxy hearts that I've used here come out true. So that actually kind of worked for me. Um, so I really wasn't too concerned. Um, so I've got my last one ready, but I just want to show you the difference between uh, some of the colours. What I have found is that the more red there is in a colour, the truer it comes out. Not exclusively, but... So this is Dark Lovely Lipstick. And that's about as good a dark, lovely lipstick as you're ever going to want. But when you go to, um, oh, let's see. When you go to Daffodil Delight, it's quite pale. And yet Daffodil Delight blend is dark. So let me just do, so that's lovely lipstick and that's Daffodil Delight. So if I put them next to each other, that's quite true. Can you actually see? Yes, more or less. That's quite true. And unless I put that on top of Daffodil Delight, it's kind of insipid. So, for example, I wanted um, pumpkin pie, which you would think would have quite a lot of red in it. But pumpkin pie and pumpkin pie. Uh, this is actually Cajun Craze and that is Cajun Craze. Pumpkin Pie, on the other hand, not so much. So I've switched some of the colours about a bit. Um, so I will list them in the order in which I have used them so that you can see what I've done. So my last one is a Granny Apple Green. And what I've done, this is shimmery white cardstock so it's going to take water because this is going to be a watercolour technique although we're starting with stamping blends so I've just with a an embossing tool so my take your pick tool I've just drawn a circle or a quarter of a circle terribly scientifically round my tear and tape reel I just wanted a sort of arc and whoops wrong piercing tool uh, always helps if you've got the one with the sharp point so I'm just going to pop down my last heart and I have to say I did play for a little while to get the arc about right but there is quite a bit of wiggle room and I then came in from the, from the ends because where you place your last one can make or break the whole thing. So I'm just going to make sure they are properly stuck down by pushing from the other side and then we can get going. Now you will have noticed that I have not exposed my um, my grid paper. I've got actually the backing of a grid paper and that's because we're going to get messy. So uh, aqua painters, you get two aqua painters in a set, one large nib, one small nib. I'm going to start with the large nib and the first thing I'm going to do, I've made sure I've got water in the barrel, the first thing I am going to do is make sure I've got ink in the top of my lid, which I have. Let's get the first few going because um, I don't really want to hang around once I get started. That's fine. OK, so let's just get to the Mango Melody because Mango Melody, I've got a very stiff Mango Melody. For some reason, it doesn't like putting ink in the lid quite so much. So I do want to make sure that that one has got... Yeah, that's fine. Don't need a huge amount. I've got them in the order in which I need them, she says, double checking. Yes, I have. So with my large aqua painter, 
I am going to just pop, oh, get some water in the barrel, always a good start, pop some water onto my shimmer white card. Now it's really where I want the ink to end up. So pick up your ink and from the end where your heart is start adding ink and then as you go along it will fade out. It's magic because you've got the most ink at this end. And then I've got my cloth just to clean up my clean clean up my aqua painter. Make myself a space to pile things up. Right, so next one is pumpkin pie. And again, we want to add some water and it doesn't matter if they run into each other. That really isn't a problem because we kind of want them to. Um, and then add in your ink. Now I will say I found this idea, although it was done differently, I think, um, on Pinterest, but I found an image that kind of fed this idea from someone called Handmade by Michelle, um, who I think is in Australia, but her website's very shy. She says she started uh, crafting when she was in Victoria, so mm, it could be anywhere, but I think possibly Australia, but it doesn't actually say where she is. Um, so, yeah. Uh, right, Mango Melody. So, just to give a shout out to her for the original idea, um, I think she did it with watercolour, and I, I don't know how she did her hearts. That's all a bit vague. I have looked at her website, and it is all a little bit vague. Um, but that's fine, because I just wanted it as inspiration anyway. Now, I will be coming in to fill in some gaps later on, but for the moment, I just want to get this nice fade of colour. So I'm concentrating on the burst for the moment. So Daffodil Delight needs some more ink. Oh, wrong way round. Because I want to do the water before I do the ink. So here we go, and as you see, it's it's blending into the next door colour, and that is absolutely fine, and is kind of what I want, because that's the whole point, really. So clean off lemon lime twist, which I used light granny apple green for, because we do not have a lemon lime twist blend. And we're not going to have a lemon lime twist soon either. So, yes, morning. Morning with a U. I'd probably have to go to straight Daffodil Delight into Granny Apple Green if we didn't still have lemon lime twist. So, whilst we've got it, I'm going to use it. Right, so that's Granny Apple, no, Lemon Lime Twist, Granny Apple Green is my next one. And as you can see, this does, whoops, take a while. You don't necessarily want quite so much water on your work surface, on your shimmer card at this point. It's fine, but not really what we were after. And as you can see, it's not an exact, uh, you know, I've not been terribly geo... Um, accurate on exactly how wide each of the bands is. It's just there or thereabouts. And I am going right up to the epoxy sticker because it's good adhesive. So it's kind of working okay for me. So that's fine. Right, Coastal Cabana next. Coastal Cabana. And because this is the shimmer white, it doesn't hold the water for as long as watercolour paper would. 
so for this it's actually probably a better medium than um, watercolour. Watercolour would work, although I'm not convinced that the uh, epoxy dots would, the hearts would stick quite so well. So Bermuda Bay, which I always think of as Coastal Cabana's big brother. So for the Bermuda Bay and the um, Coastal Cabana, I used both of the Bermuda Bay blends. So I used the dark and the light. For Pacific Point, I used the dark Knight of Navy uh, because in order to get the depth of colour for Pacific Point, I needed to go that dark. Um, so as I say, it was a bit of an experiment on which colours would turn to which colours with the blends once you get them on the hearts. Right, nearly there. So Gorgeous Grape is next. Now this is actually the Highland Heather blend because we don't have a Gorgeous Grape blend. I've done it again, haven't I? Right, doesn't matter too much. Let's Use a slightly gorgeous grape water brush. They're going to blend anyway. So, and of course now I've got too much water. So do keep a kitchen towel on hand just to soak up any excess water that you may have. Just a little bit more of the there we go. And finally, 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 lovely lipstick. Which is quite a strong colour. But it has got that nice, slightly pink hue to it that gets it right at the end of that rainbow. Now technically I think the pink should be down at the bottom next to Poppy Parade but I actually prefer it up at the top. So that is the basic idea but we need to go in and fill in any little gaps that we've got and I'm using the small brush for that and by little gaps I mean like there and there um, just so that we've got a good finish. I don't think I need any gorgeous grape, don't think I need any Pacific Point. I do need some Bermuda Bay just in there and then you can blend it out into the rest of the, the rainbow. Uh, definitely need some Coastal Cabana. As I say, just blend it out because you can re-wet Put some co more Coastal Cabana in there. And I probably need a... No, I can go gorgeous. I can go Granny Apple Green for that gap. So, Granny Apple Green. Just there. And there. And you want a not quite dry brush for this. You don't want it bone dry, but you don't want it sopping wet at this stage. So she has now got too much water. Right, Lemon Lime Twist. Just need to come in here. Fill that gap. And there. Then Daffodil Delight. You can see why I did some preparation, can't you? But just because a card takes a bit longer, I don't think we shouldn't share it. Uh, Mango Melody. What, of course, I should be doing is a Facebook Live for things like this, so that it really doesn't matter how long I keep going. Well, apart from the fact I bore you to tears if I started from scratch. Right, uh, Pumpkin Pie, just to... Fill in here. And we are done. 
So I don't need any more Poppy Parade, but that is the basic idea. So let me just move my ink pads out of the way so that they are not going to fall over. So that is your basic card. Then the next thing you need to do is to pop a sentiment in. I'm choosing to use the Well Said bundle because it's got lots of lovely things. Um, I'm using uh, Far Away, where is it? Uh, it's on here somewhere. Far Apart at, But Close at Heart because I thought that kind of went with a rainbow. But there's any number that would go into this space. And of course at the moment it's on a bundle price with the uh, what are they called? Well-written dies, which are gorgeous, and they're carrying over. So if you want this bundle um, and you want it at ten percent off, I would highly recommend you get it now because it's not a cheap bundle. So saving ten percent would be a really clever idea. Right. So close at far apart, but close at heart in memento ink, and there we go. So that is our basic card. Now I should have said this is a quarter of a sheet of uh, shimmer white cardstock. Um, and the reason I did a quarter of a sheet is because you can then cut it down and you can tidy up the edges. So I then cut one down. Here's one I prepared earlier, as if by magic. Um, I've cut this down to three, uh, five, uh, five and a half by three and three quarters. So it's my normal second size mat. And I've then grabbed a basic black mat, which I'm going to pop this on because it will then make everything pop. And then I will pop it onto a Whisper White card base. Whisper White card base, so that's a half sheet of A4, which makes it A5, and then scored down the middle to make an A6 card base. I am going to use liquid adhesive because this has been made wet. Uh, it has buckled a little. It's fine, but it has buckled a little. So in order to get good adhesion, um, I'm going to use the multi-purpose liquid adhesive and give it a really good uh, coating. And then pop it on my, my mat. Again, because it's the liquid adhesive, I can move it around a little bit to get it exactly where I want it and then turn it over and press. And I, as I've said a number of times, I like to press from the back because then you don't get any smudges on the front of your card. And bearing in mind that it has taken us 17 minutes to get to this far, um, kind of don't want smudges, really. So there we are. Now that's still going to need a bit of help. So same again. The more layers you put together, the less warped it will be, um, and the more you stick them down across the whole of the back, the better it will end up, the flatter it will end up. So, there we go. Again, I'm going to turn it over to press it flat. And there is our finished card. How beautiful is that? I love it. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to get it to work because, as I say, a hand made by Michelle hasn't explained how she made it. Um, but I think it works um, and I love it. I know there's a lot of product and I apologise for that. But, you know, occasionally one just has to go avid. Um, I am an avid crafter. It's why I am a Stamping Up demonstrator, because it means that my crafting supplies are A, discounted and B, subsidised. Um, so thank you very much indeed for joining me today. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. I would be thrilled if I got lots of thumbs up for this because it was really quite a leap of faith. Um, if you don't already subscribe and would like to, the subscribe button is in the bottom hand, right hand corner. Um, links to my online store, to the associated blog post and all that good stuff are, in, are below. Remember when you shop with me, if you use the host code, you get to share in the host rewards. So 
it's always a good way to get a little extra. Um, I choose what you get, but um, I try to choose interesting things, things you may not otherwise choose, um, but that I think you'll enjoy. So thank you very much indeed. I hope to see you again very soon. Thanks a lot for watching.